was lucky my wife called. Hello, uh, I'm at the church making a video. You're on the video. Mm, maybe it's a UPS guy? Maybe it's maybe your dad? Wasn't me, babe, I'm, I'm in town. Why don't you lock the doors? Speaking of, yo, why don't you lock the door? Hey, get the gun, baby, get the scatter gun. Get on that scatter gun. If you hear somebody at the front door and ain't me, you know what to do. Run the drill, execute alpha. <laughs> Oh hey guys, what's up and welcome back to A Bite of Brownie. If you're new here, you find yourself right smack dab in the middle of Vlog Pastors, which is an ongoing collaboration between myself and Joshua Verwers, a fellow pastoral channel, where we're firing questions back and forth, one to another, trying to dig deeper into the Christian faith and encourage you all. So, stick around. I think you're gonna like it. <laughs> I am so excited. I am so excited. Dustin, thank you so much. You changed the game. I think, Joshua, that we should find people who would like to submit video questions. I mean, we're looking in the comments. Guys, if you have a question that you want the vlog pastors to answer, if you want Joshua and myself, or if you just want to ask a pastor a question, we would love to tackle those questions. Leave them in the comments below. But if you have one that you know that you know that you know that you've got one, you know, Augie, uh, Wayne Riz, Sonic, one of you guys who already have a channel out there, you want to ask a question of the vlog pastors, Hit us up because Dustin, that was fun, man. I, I'm like inspired and challenged and ready to tackle this question. So I guess we better tackle the question since I've spent two minutes talking about the question. <laughs> so good, so good, Dustin. Dustin's question was basically this. What are our opinions on safety teams? What are our opinions on open carry, concealed carry? Uh, being armed basically is what he's asking. What are our opinions on being armed inside of the sanctuary, inside of the house of God? What are our opinions on those things? And let me start right there by saying these are just my opinions. This is just how our church chooses to implement certain things. I'm not going to tell you the full details of how we do that because that would thus defeat the purpose of said teams if they existed. Uh, let me also say that I mean I don't mean to offend anyone by any of my comments. Uh, I live I live in a fairly I live in a fairly I live in a fairly gun. How do you say this? Okay, uh, I live in Texas, y'all. I don't want to get <laughs> I don't want to go too far out there, and I do not mean to be rude or inconsiderate or anything like that. Everyone here is strapped. Uh, I think most everyone says, "Oh, you live from Tex You live in Texas. Do you guys ride a horse to work?" That's not true. Come on, that's silly. But if somebody said, "You live in Texas. You have a gun," it's like. Yep. Yeah, we all do. We all have guns. We also have a thing called open carry, which means you can carry it out in the open. Which also means we have a bunch, a plethora, a lot of people who are into guns, who are into using guns, who hunt, who, who practice marksmanship, who practice their, their weaponry, who practice the skill, who practice the art of owning a gun and using a gun. For lack of a better term, we are a prideful state who loves our ability, our Second Amendment right, to exercise the right to bear firearms. It's not uncommon to walk around public places and see somebody carrying a firearm. But you'd better believe that in the great state of Texas, I gotta be very careful about this. Again, guys, I don't mean any sort of disrespect. I know there's shootings, I know there have been shootings in Texas. I know, I know, we just got finished with El Paso, which means it happens anywhere. And I must admit that whenever I first heard this question, not from you, Dustin, but uh, when we first became aware, actually, of the shooting that was right next to you in, in South Carolina, uh, a lot of the law enforcement officials contacted the churches and said, what do we need to do to implement plans, safety teams, these types of things to make sure that your people are, are prepared, they're taken care of, that there is some sort of plan just in case something like this happens. And we have very proactive uh, police force who was willing to go around to each of the churches and train safety teams. They are fantastic. Was my opinion about all of that? That's a little mm. more difficult. Why is it so challenging? Well, you know why it's so challenging. It's because Jesus said, you've heard it said, eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you, you should take your, to take your shirt, hand over your coat to them as well. What? Saying that the church is gonna be persecuted, that they're gonna be evil people seeking out to do harm to the church, to harm the body, is like saying that it's gonna be hot in Texas. It just is. Like water, water is wet. 
There is going to be persecution. People are going to seek us out to do harm. And apparently, the scheme of Jesus is to say, turn the other cheek. Does that mean we leave the congregation undefended? No, we live, we live in a country that allows us to protect ourselves. It's crazy like that. But we're going to endure persecution. There are going to be people who come after us. The opportunity is for the believer, for the pastor, for the church to not respond in fear and say, we've got to have safety teams. We've got to make sure we have a plan in place. We've got to stir up the community into a frenzy so that everyone knows that if you come in my house, we've got a SWAT team ready for you. <laughs> I only say that because if you live down here in Texas, and if you do live in Texas, you know what I'm talking about. We've got several good old boys locked, cocked, and ready to rock at all times at all times. Oh, oh, but just in case you think I'm, I'm soft and I'm saying no, don't protect yourself. That's not what I'm saying at all because even Jesus said, he said, but now I say to you, he sent out his disciples, he's sending them back out on an assignment. He's saying, go out into all the world. And he says, but now I say to you, take what you need. If you have money, because I sent you out before without money and it, you were just fine. But this time, whenever I send you out, take money. And if you need a knapsack, take a knapsack. Oh yeah, and, and one more thing. Take a sword, just in case anyone's confused. There's a defensive weapon to ward off robbers, to ward off people who would intend to do you harm. Before I sent you out without anything, this time, uh, why don't you take a sword with you? I'm no less effective, but I do need you to protect yourself. Go out, you're going out into the world. You're going out as sheep amongst wolves. Be wise as serpents, yet innocent as doves. It's a tricky matter. Let me tell you personally why this is so tricky. You see, it was the middle of service. I just opened up. Uh, we had gotten through a, a couple of our opening songs. I was praying with the people. I was praying, I'm interacting. I am gone. Let's just put it this way. I am gone in the presence of Jesus. I know he's here. I know he's with us. I know he's right here, right now, gonna, uh, gonna minister to his people. And I am jacked up to a million. It's like, oh, the presence of God. I close out the prayer All by saying, pray. in Jesus' Jesus name, name, amen. Amen. And as I open up my eyes, standing face to face, is a woman with glazed over eyes. She's obviously on drugs, probably if, if we're, we're in the business, we know, probably a little bit of demonic activity, face to face, eye to eye. And out of the corner of my eye, I can see, we'll, we'll call them our good old boys. And they are at the ready to take down the threat. And I feel this peace wash over me. And I don't know why, it was, it was nerves for a second of, you, you know, you open up your eyes and boom, as soon as you, but immediately a peace washes over me and I know that the Lord wants to speak to this woman. I look at her and I say, you need prayer, don't you? When I first open up my eyes, her face is cold. It is stern, it's angry. But then hearing the presence, the spirit of the Lord say, she needs prayer. And I, I utter with my mouth, you need prayer, don't you? Her stern demeanor breaks. She says, yes, you're in the presence of Jesus. And as soon as I said his name, we sat down in a chair and we began praying for her. That church has is, church is begun in some people's eyes and church is over in other people's eyes. We are now focused in on this person that God has sent in off the streets. If you had noticed, we live, we live right here on the highway. It's a busy highway and we have people coming in all the time and thus why we have to be on alert for people meaning to do us harm. A lot of people come in strolling in here trying to ask for money, trying to be aggressive in asking for money, aggressive in the views that we have that they disagree with. We're right here in the thick of it. And we have this one whom Jesus has sent to us. And if we're all caught up in the fear of this is a potential threat, we're gonna miss out on the opportunity to sacrifice, to sacrifice love, to sacrifice a service, a clean service, to minister, or to sacrifice our lives for the cause of Christ. It's weird in a Western world, we think that death is the worst thing possible. Now, I don't want to die for the sake of dying, to be a clinging symbol. If I get to look that woman in the eyes and she has a knife in her hand or a gun in her hand, her hand and she smokes me, after I get to say, the name of Jesus, I get to testify to her the love that he has for her. She wants to do it then, there's worse things out there, like not testifying of the greatness of Jesus. Guys, what I long for is what my mentor introduced to me several years ago. He said, I long for the day that when somebody comes in to take my life, I don't have to worry about striking them before they strike me. That's not our system, that's not our culture. Jesus never said, strike them before they strike you. I wanna live in the culture of heaven whenever we don't have to dodge bullets any longer. We live in a reality that's greater, and we can say, in the name of Jesus, I know there's gonna be all sorts of flack for that. One of my good friends says, you go ahead, you say in the name of Jesus while I've got my nine in hand. I long for the day to live 
to die, to command, to yield, all for the cause of Christ. That's more powerful than any bullet could ever be. That's a lot. Great, great question, Dustin. This is my opinion. We live in a day and age when, do we have to have the sword? Yeah, we have to have the sword, but I am longing for the moment when Jesus says, just say this, declare my name, and the enemies of Jesus will fall. Bullets will stop. The demons will flee. I hope that suffices as an answer, just my opinion. Uh, our church does a hybrid. We have, we have people praying. If somebody of, interesting, of an interesting nature comes in, we have intercessors who are praying and asking for the Lord to deliver a word. And we also have good old boys because, as I said before, this is Texas. Hey guys, Future Jared here. I didn't like the question that I asked earlier, so here is the question of the day, Joshua. What is the role of persecution or suffering in a believer's life? What's your opinion? That's it. That's all I got. I love you. And I will see you in the next one.